Today we've got two monitors on the table. And while you might think this is like a crazy, actually there's nothing really that crazy about it sort of rig, today we're gonna be talking about productivity. But don't tune out yet, productivity doesn't have to be boring. On today's episode of Tech Tips Suggested Software, we're talking about Display Fusion, developed by the folks at Binary Fortress. And this is nothing to do with that breakthrough in fusion power that wasn't that long ago. No, this kind of productivity Productivity isn't about powering your house, it is about powering your life. Oh, and stay tuned till the end because you could win a copy for yourself. So Display Fusion was designed specifically to make using multiple monitors more efficient. They have also integrated a few other features along the way to allow you to customize your computer in a much more granular way than Windows natively allows. One of the biggest features is the multi-monitor taskbars. You might be saying to yourself, well, Windows 8 has that already. Well, this works for Windows 7. All apps that are running on that monitor will now have their own icon there on their own taskbar. And when you move the window, the taskbar icon actually moves with it, which saves you some mouse movement. It makes things a little bit more efficient. Also, third-party start menu solutions are supported. So if you've got that classic shell, start aid, etc., on Windows 8 or on Windows 7, Display Fusion will clone those to multiple monitors as well. You're also getting a full tray clock and display tactop buttons on all your taskbars and you can independently move taskbars to different positions on each monitor. Another neat feature is the powerful wallpaper management. There are very few options by default and now you can span an image across all monitors, use different ones on each, or use the same image on all. There's also support for using web URLs for images, using a random assortment of local images and even a Google image search, Flickr, uh, <laughs> Well, be careful using a Google image search for, uh, for your desktop wallpaper. And uh, even DeviantArt integration to keep your background fresh. I'd also be a little bit careful with DeviantArt as well. There are even different profiles that you can save so you can turn on different profiles when you're in public versus at home alone. See if I'd read that part of the script I'd have known that that warning is a, you know, only for when you're not on, when you're public profile, you just be careful what's on your monitor. Anyway, in addition to moving your monitors around more, um, more finely and to sort of the different things you can do compared to the default Windows UI, you can also split your monitors into as many horizontal and vertical splits as you want to make virtual monitors. This is great for NVIDIA surround and iFinity setups where by default maximizing like Google.com is going to put Google.com in the middle of your middle monitor in the, like an enormous white space that acts as a lamp for your entire room if you have three monitors. The OS uh, normally thinks it's all one large screen, so having something like virtual monitors will make it so that it'll just maximize here or here as opposed to the other way around. There's a bunch of other cool stuff, so there's window snapping, you can dedicate apps to open specific monitors, you can uh, customize your Windows login background, you can have per screen screensavers, you can have uh, child dialogues and windows stay on the same monitor instead of defaulting to somewhere else, which is really, really handy if you've ever, uh, particularly if you're a notebook user and you sometimes use an external monitor and then you'll have like like a, a, a dialogue message pop up and it's like on that one and you're like, there's no not plugged in right now. And then you like can't go get it and you have to like just guess. I've had this happen anyway. Um, you might think that this is nearly useless on Windows 8, but there are some features specific to that as well. So there's a mini start screen for starting apps without bringing up the big, huge Metro UI or modern UI start screen to the full screen. You can move the power user menu to the current mouse position instead of the default bottom left corner. You can adjust window border size, adjust uh, window border sizes, and you can send Windows Store apps to framed desktop windows. Thumbs up. Honestly, we haven't even really scratched the surface, but just showed you some of the features that we use most often here in the NCIX studio. All of the above features have been validated with an 11 display rig with multi-GPU, multi-display connections, and even USB connected displays. Finally, the guys at Binary Fortress gave us 15 lifetime licensed copies to give out to you guys. So we're giving away five each for YouTube, Twitter, and Facebook. For YouTube, give us a thumbs up. For Twitter, tweet out with the hashtag 
hashtag want display fusion, and for Facebook, comment on the post listed in the description below. For YouTube, you might want to leave a comment on the video as well, because I'm not sure how they plan to validate thumbs up. Just throwing that out there. This was in the script. Thank you for watching, guys. Don't forget to subscribe for more Tech Tips suggested software videos from me and the rest of the NCIX Tech Tips team. And as always, guys, don't for did I just say don't forget to subscribe? See, this is what happens when I try to change the outro.